Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, after making an elaborate discussion over two basic and fundamental rules of natural justice. In the present session, I have come with the topic judicial review of administrative action. In earlier sessions, we have seen that what is the concept, what is the meaning of natural justice? and what are two basic or fundamental rules of natural justice which are essential to be applicable in all the administrative decision making. The judicial review of administrative action is equally important. To apply or to ensure the application of principles of natural justice in administrative decision making process. From very earlier discussion, from very outset of our discussion over the course of administrative law, I have been telling you continuously that administrative law has been evolved to regulate the administrative activities for ensuring the constitutionalism in any system for attaining the objective of rule of law in this regime of modern welfare state the administrative law has become the need for controlling or for limiting the powers of the administration. Judicial review of administrative action is one important principle whereby we keep the administration within its defined limits. It has been an objective of administrative law to provide for any such way outs any such mechanism, any such base by which the administration can be kept within the defined limits of powers. And it can be kept within the defined limits of powers only when we prescribe certain procedures to be followed, to be adopted by the administrative authorities in making the administrative and administrative adjudicatory decisions. At the same time, it is also important to check the administration continuously whether it is in accordance with those standards, whether the administration exceeds its powers which have been conferred on it, whether the administration follows the procedures which are essential for it to follow, whether the administration makes the rational decisions, whether there are any irregularities or illegalities in the administrative decision making or whether the administration is making the decisions in accordance with the doctrine of proportionality and doctrine of legitimate expectation the judicial review becomes the need. Under the doctrine of separation of powers also we have discussed that the separation of powers can be applied only in the form of checks and balances. Without the effective system of checks and balances, all the three organs of the state cannot be kept within their bounds. And therefore, 
the judicial review of administrative action is also such a check over the authority, over the power of administration, wherein the judiciary reviews the decisions of the administration or administrative bodies or the administrative adjudicatory bodies on different grounds. For understanding the concept of judicial review of administrative action, we are to understand first the meaning of review and the, then the meaning of judicial review. Though the judicial review is made by the courts in different ways, like the judicial review of legislative action, the judicial review of judicial action also, wherein the courts, the higher courts review the decisions of the inferior courts and then the judicial review of administrative action. But as the student of administrative law, we are concerned with the judicial review of administrative action. If we try to understand the meaning of review, review as the noun refers to the examination or consideration of something again to determine if any changes are required, it means to look at something again, judging something again, reconsideration or reassessment of something or critical examination of something by any authority, by any body. Judicial review of administrative action refers to power of Supreme Court or High Courts to examine the validity of any administrative action by any public authority. So, if any public authority takes any action, makes any decision, then the higher courts review that decision or that action being taken by the public authority, whether it is within the bounds of that authority or not. Judicial review assigns to the higher judiciary the role of interpreter and observer. In our country also, the higher judiciary has been assigned the function of the interpreter of law, the interpreter of the constitution itself and also the observer to observe whether the other two organs of the state, organs of the government are acting in accordance with the standards of the constitution or not. The Supreme Court is considered to be the protector of fundamental rights, fundamental freedoms and the basic liberties of the citizens of the country. Our Supreme Court also acts as the final interpreter of law and the constitution. In this regard, the Supreme Court they, takes the superior most position in matters of the judicial review of administrative action, judicial review of legislative action and also the judicial review of judicial action. And hence, the Supreme Court has declared the judicial review as the basic structure of Indian constitution. From very beginning of the concept of basic structure of Indian constitution when it was evolved by the Supreme Court of India, in the case of Keswanand Bharti to put the limitations over the authority of, over the unlimited power of the parliament to amend the constitution under article 368. From that very case, the case Vanand Bharti, the judicial review has been recognized, considered and declared by the Supreme Court of India and number of cases are the essential part of the basic structure of Indian constitution. The judicial review is a constitutional doctrine which grants to the higher judiciary the power to examine the constitutionality of any legislative or executive action of the government on the basis of constitutional parameters, on the basis of constitutional standards, 
on the ground of legal standards. If the courts find such action inconsistent with the constitutional and legal standards, it declares these action as null, void and inoperative, ultra virus, invalid. The judicial review refers to a procedure that permits the higher judiciary to review the validity of legislative and executive acts and to annul these acts if it finds these acts unconstitutional. Now see the judicial review by the Supreme Court. As we all know that in India, the Supreme Court is the apex Indian court. It is the superior most court of appeal and superior most court for the purpose of such review. The Supreme Court of India is the highest court of appeal in all the civil matters, in all the criminal matters and even in all the constitutional matters. The Supreme Court of India is the ultimate protector of fundamental rights of the people of India. The Supreme Court of India is the concluding interpreter of the constitutional principles and the constitutional provisions. And therefore, the judicial review is the soul of any democratic system because without the power of judicial review in the hands of the higher courts, the democracy and the rule of law cannot be maintained. The democracy and the rule of law cannot survive. It was held by the Supreme Court of India in the case of Minerva Mills versus Union of India, decided in 1980, wherein the Supreme Court declares the concept of judicial review as the soul of the democratic system, as the soul of our constitution also. And therefore, in Minerva Mills case also, the judicial review was considered to be the essential element of the doctrine of basic structure of Indian constitution. The judicial review is the way out by which the democratic pattern, the rule of law can prevail in the country. If you see the judicial review by the Supreme Court of India, it seems that the Supreme Court has been endowed with the power of judicial review under Article 32 of the Constitution of India. Article 13, Article 36 also gives the power to the Supreme Court to review any legislative action on the ground of violation of fundamental rights. Article 13 gives this authority to the Supreme Court to review any legislative action either this action is being taken by the executive or the legislature on the ground of fundamental rights. Article 36 gives the special power to the Supreme Court of India to grant the leave for appeal directly to the Supreme Court. This is very broad power given to the Supreme Court of India under Article 36 for the purpose of the review by the Supreme Court of the decisions being taken by the judicial authorities. In Article 32, the Supreme Court of India has been given the power to deal directly with the cases of violation of fundamental rights. Article 32 is considered to be the remedy for the enforcement of rights conferred by part 3 that is the fundamental rights of the people in India. Article 32 is also the part of fundamental rights. It is the fundamental right to enforce the fundamental rights. Article 32 is itself a fundamental right wherein the citizens are entitled to enforce their fundamental rights against the state. See Article 32, Article 32 Clause 1, 
states that the right to move the Supreme Court by appropriate proceedings for the enforcement of the rights conferred by part 3, this part is guaranteed. So, the clause 1 of article 32 guarantees the fundamental right to enforce the rights conferred by the constitution under part 3. The clause 2 of article 32 provides for the remedies, provides for the ways for the guarantee of the enforcement of fundamental rights. The clause 2 of article 32 states that the Supreme Court shall have power to issue directions or orders or writs, including writs in the nature of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, covaranto, and certiorari, whichever may be appropriate for the enforcement of any of the rights conferred by this part. So, under clause 2 of article 32, the Supreme Court of India is empowered to issue any direction, any order or any writs including all the five writs which it finds appropriate for the enforcement of fundamental rights in a particular case. The right guaranteed by article 32 cannot be suspended except as otherwise provided for by this constitution. It is also provided within article 32 itself that no authority in India can suspend article 32 or the right guaranteed under article 32 except otherwise provided for this constitution. It can be suspended only in accordance with the provisions of Indian constitution and not otherwise. The right to move to the Supreme Court for enforcing fundamental rights is itself a fundamental right and the court has no discretion to refuse to grant an appropriate remedy if the violation of any fundamental right is established. The Supreme Court of India itself in the case of Fertilizer Corporation Kamgar Union versus Union of India in 1981 held so, wherein the Supreme Court was of the opinion that the right to move to the Supreme Court for enforcing fundamental right is itself a fundamental right and the court has no discretion to refuse to grant an appropriate remedy if the violation of fundamental right is established. It means once the violation of fundamental rights is established that this is not the discretion of the court, the court has to give the remedy. It means that it is not only discretion, it is not only power, it is not only right, it is not only jurisdiction of the Supreme Court under Article 32, but it is an obligation of the Supreme Court of India, it is a responsibility of the Supreme Court of India which has been imposed by the makers of the constitution through Article 32 on the Supreme Court to protect and safeguard the fundamental rights of the people and to provide appropriate remedies in cases of violation of fundamental rights. And this essence of Article 32 makes the Supreme Court of India as the final protector of the fundamental rights of the people. Article 13 of the Constitution of India also gives the power to the Supreme Court and to high courts also to declare any such law as void which is found inconsistent with the fundamental rights. The clause 1 of article 13 lays down that all the laws in force in the territory of Indian India immediately before the commencement of this constitution, meaning thereby it talks about the existing laws which were operative at the time of commencement of Indian constitution and which were not repealed. In so far they are inconsistent with the provisions of this part shall to the extent of such inconsistency be void. So, both the laws either these are existing laws or these are the present laws being enacted by the legislature. If these are found inconsistent with the fundamental rights shall be void to the extent of their inconsistency with fundamental rights. If you see 
the meaning of the term law which has been given in article 32 clause 3 it includes both the legislation and delegated legislation delegated legislation means the legislation being enacted by the executive under the power delegated to it which we have already discussed under the topic of delegated legislation and its various aspects article 13 clause 3 states that in this article unless the context otherwise requires law includes any ordinance order by law rule regulation notification custom or uses having in the territory of india the force of law laws in force includes laws passed or made by legislature or other competent authority in the territory of india before the commencement of this constitution and not previously repealed notwithstanding that any such law or any part thereof may not be then in operation either at all or in particular areas so the meaning of the law under clause 3 of article 13 refers to all kind of laws being enacted either by legislature or by the executive so the administrative action or the rule making by the administration is also within the scope of the meaning of law under article 13 article 136 of our constitution gives the special power to the supreme court to grant special leave to appeal by the supreme court of india though the hierarchy of the courts has been established and the appeal can be made in accordance with that hierarchy the appeal can be initiated to the supreme court only against the decisions of the competent high court and the provisions have also laid down regarding the appeal that only after the certificate being issued by there are very rare subject matters in which without the cert issue of certificate of the high court the supreme court will entertain the appeal but in article 136 the supreme court is given the authority to grant the special leave for appeal to the supreme court in any case even against the decision of a judge of subordinate judiciary even against the decision of a magistrate the supreme court can hear the appeal if it finds it appropriate so article 136 is also very important with regard to the judicial power of judicial review of the supreme court this article 136 also refers to the tribunals it means that administrative adjudicatory bodies are also the scope within the ambit of article 136 because the tribunal refers to a statutory authority exercising the power to affect the rights of the people if we try to find out the status of the judicial review by the high courts we can refer to article 226 and article 227 of indian constitution article 226 gives the power to the high courts to issue certain rates clause 1 of article 226 states notwithstanding anything in article 32 every high court shall have the power throughout the territory in relation to which it exercise jurisdiction to issue to any person or any authority including in appropriate cases any government within those territories directions orders or writs including writs in the nature of habeas corpus mandamus prohibition covaranto and certiorari or any of them for the enforcement of any of the rights conferred by part 3 and for any other purpose this phrase conferred by part 3 and for any other purpose gives the wider jurisdiction to the high courts as compared to the jurisdiction of the supreme court of india in article 32 under article 32 the supreme court can issue these directions these orders or these writs only on the instance of the violation of fundamental rights 
it can issue these rates and directions only for the purpose of protection of fundamental rights. But the High Court can issue these directions, orders, and rates for the violation of fundamental rights as well for the violation of any other right or for the any other purpose. Clause 2 of Article 226 states that the power conferred by Clause 1 to issue directions, orders or rates to any government, authority or person may also be exercised by any high court exercising jurisdiction in relation to the territories within which the cause of action wholly or in part arises for the exercise of such power notwithstanding that the seat of such government or authority or the residence of such person is not within those territories. Clause 3 states that where any party against whom an entry order, whether by way of injunction or stay or in any other manner is made on or in any proceedings relating to a petition under clause 1 without furnishing to such party copies of such petition and all documents in support of 